Hi, I'm Demetrius Nealon. I'm the PM at Microsoft for Winget, so the Windows Package Manager. And we've had an issue on our backlog a little, approaching three years, I think, on support for a native PowerShell module. Last night, I pushed the first alpha version up to the PowerShell gallery, so you'll have that to start using immediately if you download it. I, I tweeted about it late yesterday afternoon, something that I've been really excited about for a long time. There is a kind of a long history on why we didn't go with PowerShell to begin with. All that's kind of water under the bridge. Um, <laughs> you got my attention very early on. We just had a lot of heavy lifting to do. The Windows Package Manager is not just the client experience. You're also dealing with a lot of back-end infrastructure and other things. And this is a little bit of a teaser. Some of these modules don't exist yet, or at least they're not out publicly, but they will be. And I'll go into some detail on those. So if you want to get started with using PowerShell, you used to have to go to the releases page, you have to download the PowerShell module, you have to fight some dependency things and get that going. Um, we had the instructions up on the release notes. Hopefully things are a lot easier now. You should just be able to import the module directly from the gallery. You'll see the version number in this one differs slightly. I've been fighting an internal NuGet feed. We kept having to bump the versions up. The one that we published was 010 alpha. So very, very early. We had tried early on to do Crescendo, and I got a lot of help from Jason on that and the PowerShell team. The reality was there was a really big impedance between what you would think of as sort of a traditional Windows CLI and the approved nouns and verbs from PowerShell. I am not a PowerShell expert, so I've really been going through a lot of the sort of growing pains myself trying to figure this out. I've also committed to spending at least one week a month with no CLI, so I will be beating the team up and telling them that this is horrible and make it work. <laughs> now, they do pretty much give me what I ask for, you know, so a lot of this, I will say, is my responsibility. I've had to really struggle on what do we prioritize. Is it validation improvements on the back end, whether it's malware scanning, whether it's other business policy stuff we have to deal with, or whether it's something on the client like dependencies, dealing with side-by-side -side packages, dealing with installers that don't do a great job when they update themselves in the control panel. So these are the most common scenarios that we target for. You want to find a package, you want to install it, you want to update some package that you have on your system, and you want to uninstall it. And an interesting note there, when I kind of designed the original vocabulary, my mind was upgrade was for packages and update was for the sources trying to sort of disambiguate. We recently added command aliases in the CLI, so now I find myself typing update more than upgrade, which I found was kind of unusual and interesting. So first thing I noticed playing with this, my typical go-to is Visual Studio Code. I can Winget install VS Code and things are great. I try to do the exact same thing in PowerShell and it yells at me. That's what that red text is. When it finally does work, because I gave it the explicit ID, then everything is great, it does what I expect, except I don't get my lovely rainbow progress bar. Don't know how I'm gonna do that in PowerShell, but I'll probably see if there's a way to do that. I did finally figure out if you pass in moniker, you can get VS Code, but that sort of defeated the purpose of having that less typing mentality. That's one of those things I'm learning to work with in PowerShell. It feels like it's pretty verbose and a lot of typing, but I get the explicit nature of it, and I'm always open to improvements and other things we can do to make that better. The next scenario was update. Now in Winget, if I type Winget upgrade or Winget update, it gives me this lovely list of everything that needs an update, and then I can just pass in dash dash all and it will do it. In the PowerShell world, it's slightly different. So what I thought I wanted for update was to not have to pass in an explicit package. I wanted to be able to figure out everything that was there and run it. I started fighting some piping commands and pretty much failed abysmally at that. But we did add the is updatable. Uninstall, fortunately, no pain there. It just worked. As long as the uninstaller does its job, everything is fine. Now, when we started with Winget as the CLI, 
it was all C++ code, everything was sort of self-contained, nobody had really taken any dependencies on us and looked at using us to do other things. Along comes the Microsoft Store team looking at how are they gonna make the store relevant and get past the limitation and the restrictions on what we think of as UWP apps, and those are all the MSIX or AppX packaged apps if you're not familiar. You couldn't submit an MSI or an XE or a portable app or anything inside of a zip to the store. This was a huge hurdle. They really had no idea how they were gonna get better apps in the store, so they basically said, well, hey, about, how about this WinGet thing? Next thing you know, we're having to build a Calm API for them to talk to us and integrate with us. That was when I saw my opening for PowerShell. I knew if we refactored the CLI to talk to the Calm API, we could build the PowerShell module to talk to that same Calm API, and we can expose that open source via a NuGet package so that anybody can do the same thing. That's exactly what we've done. We just didn't make a lot of noise and a lot of documentation about it so that we could hopefully iterate a little bit more before making some big noise and saying, hey, come hook into this and you can use any of these interfaces the way you want to. So I would say the biggest thing right now in my mind is how do I get parity? How do I go from all of the Swiss Army knife style commands that we have in Winget CLI and give those same experiences in PowerShell? And I know there's a lot of different ways to do that where you're looking at piping and filtering and writing other things. This is an area that I'm really looking for feedback. As someone that's fairly new to PowerShell, I've got some ideas based on the docs that I've read, but I could really use your input and tell me what feels right, what doesn't feel right. We had a pretty good example where we were looking at pinning. You know, we're gonna be able to win, get, pin a package, and honestly, the reason that got prioritized, there's a lot of packages that we get false detections on upgrades, You've got some runtimes that do weird things that you don't want to upgrade them. So pinning gives us the ability to go back to that win, get, upgrade all path and have things just work. There's no pin verb as far as I could tell. So we went through, we talked about a lot of different things. I opened up a discussion. I think we're looking at limit rather than lock because you might actually say, hey, I want Python 3.8 and I'll take any of those minor upgrades, but I don't want 3.9. So rather than locking to an explicit version, we want to limit to that sort of semantic version range, whether that's major version, minor version, or the patch. So that's some of the thinking there. The other thing, earlier I showed you four different PowerShell modules. The create module, we started building Winget create. It's not in C++, it's actually C sharp. Originally, the idea is that that was gonna be something that powered a website. You'd go put in a URL for your installer, type in some metadata, it would figure out the rest. We realized that there were enough people that were automating things, we didn't need that. So we built Winget Create as an automation tool for CI CD scenarios. So that it'll just read any existing manifest in the repository, help you with the upgrade, carry that metadata forward, and if you feed it an installer, it will download it, get the hash, it will do its best to figure out what versions and values need to be present, and then you can iteratively walk through. Before we had that out in A1.0, the community jumped in. Somebody by the name of Caleb Lidke, who is now a Microsoft MVP, created something called YAML Create. It's a great tool, it does a phenomenal job. It's probably honestly better than Winget Create because he could iterate faster and leverage on a lot of other extra libraries that we're able to get into governance for component governance pretty quickly, and that's allowed the community to really drive that tool. For the most part, all I'm doing is either reviewing the PRs and approving them, or having a chat back and forth with them. So when we think about the modules, the create module is really gonna be all about creating a manifest or a new version for your package, and either submitting that to the GitHub repository, the WinGet packages repo, or targeting a private REST source. And that gets me to the other module, the REST source module, which is really all about standing up a private enterprise source and managing all the manifests that are in there. Whether you wanna somehow take a feed from the community and bring that in, or whether it's your own line of business apps, the idea is that's gonna give you the tool that automates with that, and we're expecting that's gonna come out in the next couple of months. We've got a lot of other work that we're trying to do, and I'm balancing a lot of priorities, but PowerShell is one of the big ones for me. So again, let me know where you want me to focus that engineering energy. I have to make progress on a lot of different fronts, but I'd rather give you the most important things first. 
So this is the is update available and that lovely syntax. This is me trying to do the equivalent of upgrade all and getting an exception thrown on every single package. And the one that we fail on here that you don't see on my screen, it was actually Microsoft Teams. When you install it in user mode, it installs another package called Teams Machine Wide Updater. We get a false positive on that. We always think it needs to be updated. It's a terrible experience. So hopefully pinning will help with that in some cases. And we're still working with the team to try to figure out how do we either address what's going on in the installer or how do we handle that class of errors? Who would have thunk you wanted a package manager on Windows Server? <laughs> yeah. So for me to get on server, I'm looking at a 10-year LTSE servicing window, looking at having to go back and do security fixes and potentially patching bugs on every version of Winget we release for a decade. That would slow me down even slower than I have to go right now. So we've really been trying to figure out how to avoid that, not get ourselves sort of broken into jail there. There's no store on Windows Server. In Server Core, there's no GUI. So what happens when I try to install WinUI XAML framework, which the app installer we're shipped inside of depends on, and some other interesting things that happen. So we started building some scripts to try to figure out how can we bootstrap Windows Server with WinGet, what is the right way to do that? Reaching out to Jason, and, and Jason points me at Steve Lee, and they talk about this PowerShell DSC thing. What in the world is that? Desired state configuration, aha. Now we have a path. There's something on server that's the local configuration manager. There's already a lot of people that have done work in this space. Hey, it would be really nice to get this, and how do I test it? And I'm struggling, is it? DSC v11, is it DSC v2? Is it this new v3 thing being referenced? How do we get out the door with that? What are our timelines? Ideally, it would have been v3. v3's got some nice things in it. We ended up landing on v2 since it's essentially stable today. We did ask the team to go ahead and give us invoke DSC resource without it being an experimental feature. And that leads into us having a DSC resource that now will not only let you install WinGit, but you can now use WinGit to install your other packages, upgrade your other packages, and uninstall them. So in this one, I'm using the DSC resource to install Microsoft.NuGet which isn't even an installer, it's just a loose executable. Winget actually does put the registry entries in for you that are gonna give us the version information that we're looking for. They give us the uninstall string so that we can remove it. And as long as it doesn't update itself and get us out of state, which by the way, a bunch of portables do, we can actually keep it current and clean. So in this case, I'm using the resource to install NuGet and then the next thing I'm doing is using it to uninstall it by just doing absent. So we also have WinGet package. This one is essentially dealing with the, the nature of the packages themselves on what we're installing. And you're looking on the depends on, that's part of the PowerShell dependency work. We're handling dependencies a little bit differently in our mind at least, where with WinGet, a dependency is an explicit dependency that's called out in the manifest, and WinGet is gonna go try to figure that out and install it for you. With my experimentation and my learnings, I recommend if you're using DSC, do all of your work in DSC, handle your dependencies explicitly that way. We did an experiment with Windows features, so WinGet now actually has an experimental feature to turn on Windows features. We were trying to do some work and we wanted the Wix toolkit and we wanted to have that in the WinGet repository for one of the teams that was trying to build a configuration for a VM so they could build their product. Couldn't get it in WinGet. We didn't have experimental features for doing that work. So two week delay, you can now turn on Windows features with WinGet by just adding that to the manifest. That lets me get that in the community repository where hopefully you won't be using that mechanism when you're doing this in DSC. The Sources resource, this is so that you can actually tell WinGet what sources you want it to connect to. 
So if you've got a private enterprise repository or you want to rip out the store or you want to rip out the community repository, this resource will do that for you. We've got the one for the user settings. This is everything you see in the JSON file. So your time to live on the cache expiration, your rainbow progress bar, all of your experimental features, whether or not you want verbose logging all the time, all of those things are user settings. And we have a separate one for the administrator settings. These are all of the ones that are potentially a security risk or a security concern. Most of these already have group policy to control them. So this could be enabling a local manifest. It could be disabling the check on the SHA-256 before we do the install. There's a handful of different things. So that was all the content that I provided. I was actually being a little selfish. I'm either here to answer Q&A and get beat up a little bit, or have you tell me what to type and see if we can make something break. Questions? How do we deal with the reboots? So right now, Winget does not deal with reboots. We're working on potentially using either the HK uh, local machine reboot in the registry, or we're going to do something else to enlighten ourselves what we were doing. We see this problematic with libraries that are currently running that need to be reloaded with the reboot. We see this with some of the more complex installers like Visual Studio, and we see this with Windows features. So we, we do want to get to a point where when you say Winget install some collection of packages, or when you say import Winget package and you're pulling in a bunch of things, we want to be able to pick up where we left off. We're still working through some of the logistics. What you'll see us doing today, we're already adding metadata in the manifests that tell us and enlighten us whether or not this installer triggers a UAC when it's executed in user mode. And that's some of this preliminary work. We're also looking at a single UAC prompt to handle the elevation for everything that needs it. But we're still going to default all of the other installs down a user scoped process so that we're not unnecessarily elevating. It is. It is. So, the main thing getting on Windows Server without the store, like this, those dependencies I mentioned, it's the VC runtime, it's the WinUI XAML, it's the things that App Installer and Winget need to be there. You don't get those for free, and they're not just packages that you can just grab and readily download. So we're looking at improving the work with some of the other teams to make those binaries sort of more consumable and readily available so that you could either reach out to the internet and pull them down from their source or go ahead and take them along with you. We're actually working on Winget Download, which will let you download packages from the community repository, and even those from the Microsoft Store that will include their license for offline scenarios. We think that might be one of the mechanisms that you could use to get those libraries and frameworks that you need if you're trying to manually set up server. Anybody else? So the, the DSC work with Winget is mostly in a handful of different issues on the repository. Um, we're still fairly in exploratory phases. There are some, you know, certainly there's code there. We just haven't built the module and signed it and published it. We're working on doing that, but we're still doing some internal testing. But if you're feeling brave and you want to go grab the code out of GitHub and take a stab at it, you can certainly build that code yourself. And you can pull those modules down and mess with them. And it's open source, so if you feel confident looking at the API, we do have the API documented in the document section on the GitHub repository. We also have a sample UWP caller project that calls those common APIs. So if you want to speed things along and there's something you really care about, create an issue, let me know, submit a PR. We're happy to work with anybody to get things to go faster, especially if it's being done the right way that you want it to be done. And where can we get the information about just the Winget PowerShell module? So the information on the Winget PowerShell modules is pretty new. Um, we were coming in pretty hot last night. I just was feeling froggy and decided to ship it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 
been in development for quite a while. We've had several different iterations of it, but we've gotten a lot of feedback from people that said it is just too hard to download and consume from the Winget CLI releases and the assets. That's really not how people are going to use it. So, you know, we, we talked about it and I decided let's just make this an alpha release and get it out there and get it in people's hands. Blame me for everything that's wrong with it. I'm with him. The engineers are really smart. They really do care. They want to do this the right way. A lot of them are traditional Windows developers with a C++ background. They're not PowerShell experts. We have lovely discussions all the time about all of the challenges of making everything work. Even though the PowerShell gallery says it works on Windows PowerShell, it does not. It requires PowerShell 7. I would like for the ability for it to work on Windows PowerShell. There are some interesting things going on with libraries and how we try to bootstrap and repair ourselves in the scripts. Anybody else? I'm going to try to get the DSC resource out in the next couple of months. Um, I think that a lot of our preliminary work is sort of leading in the right direction. We've had a lot of discussions with the PowerShell team. I've been trying to wrap my head around, like, what is a MOF file? What is the difference between machine config and v2? And where are you going with v3? Um, those have been some pretty interesting discussions. Uh, one of some of my feedback early on, just trying to like reverse engineer what's going on so I could wrap my head around it, it seemed very imperative in nature. Like you kind of had to tell it, do step one, then step two, then step three. And I told him, you know, that's great if I'm writing a script, but I don't know how to reason about that. And this MOF file thing is kind of confusing. In my mind, I would like to see something that's more declarative in nature that I can just say, hey, here's the packages I want, here's the things I want configured. You know, PowerShell, you go take care of that for me and, and get that environment configured that way. Um, so there's been a lot of back and forth discussion and a lot of learnings on how we think about dependencies and how we think about the challenges with different versions. And that was one of the other things with the, the DSC resource where Winget will install software for you. We want to be item potent. We want to make sure that we're either installing the latest version or the exact version you're telling us or able to honor a greater than some version. We're still struggling with ranges. Um, I get really nervous when we, when we want to say, I know my package works with version 1.1, 1.2. It doesn't work with 1.4. It works with 1.5. and doesn't work in 2.0, but it works in 2.1. I'm sure you've never had any discussions like this dealing with version management or dependencies, but that is a real pain point that I've had with it, and we've got a lot of those challenges. So it's taken us a long time to get to the point where we had what I would say is a reliable package manager that you can reason about with enough packages that it matters, and really getting onto server is not just about, hey, how do I get Winget on there, and how do I use that to do things? I've been beaten up quite a bit where this needs to be something that's automated. You need to work and play well in this other space. And it can't really just be, you go solve these problems in a vacuum and assume your solution fits everybody else. So there's been a lot of learning going on there. Go ahead. Questions for you. <laughs> um, I would say this is more of an ask, not necessarily question. Please try this. One thing per issue. If you go in and you tell me these 10 things are wrong, I might never be able to close that issue and I'm gonna end up with the Cartesian result of every bug scenario that you have. Um, I'm, I'm truly, I'm not trying to punt and say I'm not gonna do something or whatever. I just have to balance and, and I'll actually pull up the GitHub repository for you. So right here in the center, what's on the roadmap? I'm very transparent. When I have to make a strategic investment with another team, I put that up top. That middle section of things are things I think are critical for a package manager. The bottom section is not the least important. It's just another area and it's a lot more complicated to describe. It's everything you want by thumbs up. So if you go in on the main issue and you stick your thumbs up on it, you're telling me what you want me to work on next. And if you can look at the way things are right now, you want me to figure out dependencies in Winget, you want proxy option support, and you want fonts. I would have never expected people wanted Winget to install fonts. <laughs> but, I, 
But now that I have tried to install Cascadia Cove to make my oh my posh prompt work, I now understand why you want me to install fonts. Uh, and I'm working with Dustin Howitt on the Windows Terminal team with a lot of their learnings on that to try to figure out how to do this right. If you have knowledge in this area, again, share it. This helps us to move a little bit faster. Um, so the other thing I've done, just because PowerShell is special, You bet. So PowerShell has its own tag. Um, I have to spend a lot of time disambiguating between people that say, oh, I'm using the, the Winget PowerShell module when they're just using the CLI in PowerShell. So I've been going through a lot of that fun stuff. Um, if it truly is something that's specific to the PowerShell module, one of our commandlets, I'll throw PowerShell on there. Um, after a little while, when we start getting them a little more mature, I'll start calling out like the specific commandlet on it so that we know when we're working on like install Winget package, we know that, that we should take a look at all the issues related to that. And I'm expecting this list to grow. If I've done a good job here, you actually care enough that you're gonna go take a look at it and tell me what's broken or what's not working and, and add that in here. If it's something that is sort of what I would say is product-wide, like fundamentally a Winget issue, like I'm gonna see the same thing in the COM API, it doesn't matter who's calling me, I probably won't tag it as PowerShell, but I have no problem having people submit either CLI syntax or PowerShell syntax or whatever works for you to give us that feedback. One of the issues I ran into Winget is the multiple ways you can search for a package is very confusing sometimes, so you got name, ID, moniker, um, and the way it searches for those packages. Like So for example, if you try to install PowerShell, uh, it will go in and actually find the preview version, it won't install that because there's two packages that can return. And if you try to use the ID, Microsoft.PowerShell, it will still return both packages. If you use the exact, exact makes it case sensitive, which kind of breaks it fundamentally. First time I've done this live for anybody. So you are probably correct in, in, in the PowerShell side of things as well. Um, we're probably not disambiguating the exact unless you specify exact. Correct. Um, so in PowerShell, right, if I put in the exact name without wild cards, I'll just set you know, just PowerShell or the ID just Microsoft.PowerShell to return. So the exact is the way to get it for right now, but I completely agree with you. So if I see it and it's a substring, ignore the rest of it, um, just give you exactly what you searched for. Yeah, so if I'll, you were to make it lowercase e or f, it will not return that package. <laughs> Looks like we do the right thing. So, so, so exact is a case, is intended to be a case sensitive exact match. When you don't specify exact, we're looking at substrings. When you're hitting the Microsoft Store, you're hitting a Rust endpoint that doesn't fully implement all of our spec. So you're gonna get typically the top 20 results with that substring match anywhere in their metadata. When you're hitting the pre-index package, which is the Winget community repository, you're actually gonna be getting the matches based on sort of a heuristic, where if what you gave us is an ID, we'll show that first. If we have other matches, an exact match on a token for a moniker, we'll show you that one. And we have some logic that we carry down to try to give you that best match experience for what you typed in. With PowerShell, it is a bit different, so I don't know if we should be thinking about fuzzy match or explicitly calling out case insensitive or substring or things like that. Give us feedback on that. Those are areas where maybe it's something unique to PowerShell that the CLI doesn't care about. So the comment is, if we go with the exact sort of logic that we have for the CLI with exact, users are gonna get confused. They're not gonna see what they're looking for. Um, Ab absolutely, we, we do have a lot of confusion with 
what's going to happen? How does somebody discover a new feature? How are they supposed to use it? We get a lot of that. We did the Microsoft Docs, and we threw in dash Q as query for just basically whatever you're typing into the CLI, like if you're searching for a package. And people are like, what is this query argument? And it's like, it's the name of the thing that you just type in afterwards. Um, but we had a lot of confusion around that. So if you've got ideas on how maybe we could help that, that would also be good. Yeah, right now we don't support wildcards at all. A um, lot of a lot of challenges with weird packages and name squatting concerns and everything else. Um, that's something that we've been looking at doing. There's been a lot of discussion about doing regex or doing other types of things. I I have personally shied away from that because I'm concerned that complexity is going to slow down other features that are more important. But if you disagree with me, all you got to do is just get the issue on GitHub and get the thumbs up to go up. Typically, what I'll do when I'm doing planning, I try to look at about a 90-day window of engineering capacity. I have to look across everything, the REST source, the validation infrastructure on the back end, the client, Wingit Create, all of the other partner teams that we're trying to support, and I have to figure out how to sort of make progress on all of those. So that's why those single discrete asks are good, and if it's something you really want, thumbs up on that top issue moves it up. You bet. It, absolutely my pleasure. I try to be very approachable. I will be on Twitter, on Stack Overflow, on Reddit, on Y Combinator, whatever is out there, I try to figure out how do I find the people talking about Winget. I try to go in there and engage. And the main thing is for me, it's easier if you come to GitHub because then I can actually sort and create issues and filters. But you'll see issues that I've created that I screenshotted somebody's tweet or created an issue from somebody's comment on something. The discussion that was created on yesterday when I pushed it up, there was somebody that had recommended something and I literally just copied them to create the issue. So this is the, hey, go fix your metadata, you got it wrong. Yeah, and, and, and again, like I said, you know, not being a, a PowerShell expert, I am going to force myself for a week not to use the CLI at a time every month so that I can start getting more of that feel for PowerShell and how it's being integrated. I know there's been some talk about the, um, the, the names are long for the modules that we have. I know it's a lot of typing, but I didn't want to step on the WinGet one that was out there that looks like a OneGet provider or some of the other ones and I wanted to have some logical namespacing that you could depend on. And we are signing all of these modules. They are alpha. Uh, I think when we get reasonably close to functional parity, they'll go beta. Um, there are some extra policy requirements internally before it goes GA, but we'll telegraph whenever we have a good feeling for that. My gut tells me it'll be about a year before I can do a full GA where we're actually supporting this for all of the end market scenarios. I've got to say, you're a gentler crowd than the MVP summit was. They, <laughs> they, were, they were tough. Good questions. Um, I am going to be going to Prague. Super excited about that. Uh, that's going to be a vacation for me. It'll just be a coincidence that there's a conference going on. Hopefully, I'll have some other stuff to show, and we'll have more of these modules working, and you'll have beaten me up on the initial versions of those. Any other questions or feedback, or do I give you all a few minutes to go disappear or come beat me up in person? <laughs> awesome. I'll stick around for um, the rest of the time that we have the room, and then you know, certainly feel free to contact me in any which way you want, and I'm happy to jump in and create issues and, and do whatever to sort of start making real progress here. I've been serious about PowerShell for a very long time. I just had to find the right way to bring it in and the right mechanisms to do that, and I had to learn nouns and verbs, and what's this monads document, and all of these other things before I walked out looking like a complete idiot. Instead, it's just mostly an idiot. 